Hey gamers, today we're looking at the Tudors. Let's check it out. To set up the game, what you're gonna do is you're gonna shuffle these little tokens, put them on the bottom of each space on the board, and then take the bag. There's a bag full of faction tokens. You're gonna spread them out on top of these other tokens underneath those, so put them on top. You're going to bring out a red, green, and blue card to go in those spaces highlighted by the colors there underneath the board. Uh, there are different ways to play the game here, determining on what cards you set up. There is a predetermined one. This is like the starting one they suggest. Uh, this will tell you basically what you do with these white or black tokens. And again, the rule book's very simple on what they mean. But also it'll tell you, hey, if you're playing two players, three players, four players, what year you should start. So this is 1536. Okay, so 1536, I should be starting right there. That's where I put the frame. That will mark the time as I'm moving up the track there. But if it was two players, I'd be playing in 1533 and moving the track right down there. So again, it, it will tell you here on this card. And of course, how many meeples that you'll be putting out each round. So the first round, everyone would be putting out two meeples. Second round, everyone would put, be putting out one. There is another uh, player board that has two players on here that you would flip it over and play with. But again, it's very simple, tells you what to do. As uh, you've put all those out, you're gonna put your little start score tracker right here. Everyone's gonna get this little hand uh, shield, player shield that has all these rules in the back, I'll explain later. And you start with two rings, you can put the rings anywhere you want, do whatever you want with them, but there you go, you get the rings. Uh, now, uh, this is the, uh, uh, I don't know, deluxe edition, I guess. It comes with these figures here. Usually they're just meeples, and meeples are fine for this game, too. I just have the, this one just came with everything. It even came with a little promo pack of other ways to kind of switch up the game, just another additional way to switch up the game. Either way, how the game goes is very simple. Uh, starting with whoever has the starting player token, they are going to place however many is required. So in this game, it'd be two. So I'd place two here. Green may place two somewhere, or maybe I place one and one. It doesn't matter. Once everyone has placed their uh, people, they're going to slide them in to this area, and they all take seats. If there were any existing people, I'm using this for uh, just one player here, but there, if there were existing people already in these seats, and we they would get bumped off and return back to that player. So you won't be able to stay there forever unless no one else is coming in. Like, for instance, if this is only the two people that come in, and then the next... Uh, uh, turn, blue put two, two more. Well, no one's getting pushed until maybe I put one in and then blue decides to put one in on the next round and it's going to bump me off and everyone's going to shift down there. Once they're all done with that, they're also going to put their little teacher located with the uh, in the expansion here. It's with the circle bottom there. And he's the taller one of the little figures. But he, you have two spaces behind each desk. Each player will put one behind each desk. Now, one thing about the teachers, the, you cannot activate the actions on the table if a teacher is not there. So if all four players migrate over here and no teacher set here, then these guys are just stuck. They're not learning anything, I guess, so they don't get to take the actions. But what are all the actions? The actions are very simple. What you're going to do, first off, this one lets you place a meeple. Uh, matching you know, one of the rings, you will place a meeple in one of the starting guys. As you see, I have yellow and red. So I could place my meeple here on the yellow or here on the red, whichever one I wanted. Because matching the ring, I place them down. So let's say I place them down here. I'd grab this, keep this up, and then keep this token. Uh, like I said, d different rounds will tell you what these mean. Uh, for example, in this round, I, I could cash this in immediately or save it to the end of the game. At the end of the game, you can get bonus points thanks to how many you have of these. But if I wanted to do now, I could switch places with someone. So maybe I want to... Switch places with this guy. Maybe later on I get another black token where I can switch places with this guy and hopefully stay on that, stay at that table for another round. Or I could just keep it, whatever you want. These you'll take behind your player shield. They can also count for in-game scoring. In our example, they do. But there'll be different things depending on what type of game you're playing. Uh, but that's one thing you do. Place someone. The next one, you, you, you think uh, students can take either or. The teacher will be able to take both actions when it's their turn. But, uh, uh, and by the way, when they take the action, they'll move behind the chair. As you see here, they have little spots behind the chair, so they have to move them. And if it's these meeples, we kind of lay, lay them down too. But once they have taken their action, they are removed from the board. So I have two more people left. Blue took all their actions. I can take one more and then maybe a second action. I'm trying to lay these down so you'll see where they all go. Anyway, B action says, hey, take off one of the rings from your finger and exchange it with another one and also get the card. Well, for me, 
I see the next color there is green, and since I have to pay cards to move up the track, what I'm going to do is I'll maybe my next action is to take this one. Maybe my first one is to place that guy down. My second action is to remove this ring, put it back on the board here, and grab a green ring. Now, if the ring's not available, of course you can't get it. And when I get the green ring, I also grab a green card, which is what I'm going to need to play later on if I ever get to move them up there. How do I move them up? Well, that's what these other tables do here. This table, as long as I get rid of X amount of cards, one to two cards, I can move my pupil up one or two spaces. So I have a green one. I don't have a blue one, but let's say if I did, let's say I had the green and the blue card in my hand and I activated this action, I can move him up. I turn in my blue and my green, have him move up, up. He only takes the top faction token and keeps it, but whenever he stops, that's where he gets this token underneath. And of course, you see it's another black, so hey, hey, I'm going switch, to switch a Rooney there, try to keep my people at the for, first and front of the door, or maybe just keep it. Again, I keep this token with me. Now, after that, after someone's moved up, you will go into the bag and just bring out two more tokens uh, behind you. You will not be replacing the little circular disc underneath them. Those are one and done in the game. But the top pieces you are... Uh, you, you could be using for whatever reason. There's a, there's a usage for this. Um, anyway, the next thing you can do, uh, that was the C action. The D action is you can get two different colors of uh, cards that match your rings. So, for instance, I only have two. So, in this case, I would get a red and a uh, green if I wanted to pick that up. And maybe I do. Maybe I get a red and a green. Okay, tile there. And that's what I do. Um, <clears throat> either way... Uh, that's 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 uh, again the teacher again can both do both of these. The last action here is pay one to seven cards, moving them up one to seven. And by the way, you can move different ones up. So let's say I had one here and here. If I wanted to move three spaces or four spaces, I'd move them one, two, and pay those cards three, move them and move them there four. You can move multiple ones as long as you have the cards that match those faction tokens. And again, as they're moving forward, they would take the faction tokens with them over time, but that's moving one to seven spaces. And finally, you can take the F action. Remember, it's both if you're the teacher, but either or if you're the student, and that means just grab a card of any color you want, and you have to match your rings. Now, I will say this, that this player board, no one's explained this in any video I've ever seen, but they also, the where your rings are, see those highlighted fingers, that will enhance one of these actions on the table. Uh, by the way, here it says, hey, you can always turn in two cards of any color for one card of a color you want, and for one time, you can t trade in two, one time per turn, you can trade in two of any color faction tokens to move your guy up, uh, back, forth, to the side, however you want. There are reasons why you'd want to move back. Maybe I want to get another, you know, circle token. I want to get that one. So maybe I move my guy back just to grab that uh, for either in-game scoring or to use its ability. So there are ways to move backwards as well. Um, and, and, and the, and the uh, actions will indicate where you can put them. But I can, you can only do this once per turn uh, on your turn there. Now, what do these uh, ones do? Well, you need sometimes you need four rings, five, you know, uh, four rings, three rings, two rings, depending on what action it is. But they just enhance the actions of others. For instance, if you had rings on all these, pick, uh, uh, if I had one, two, and three rings here, instead of just putting them down on a color that matches my ring, I can put them down on any color. It doesn't have to match my ring. And B says, hey, you know what? Instead of switching out one ring and getting that card, I can switch out two rings on my uh, board. Maybe I'm looking for different rings, and there's a reason why you'd want to do that. But anyway, I could do that, and but I'd only get one card. With the C action here, uh, it says here, hey, you can go one to three spaces instead of one to two. Instead of moving them straight up, I can move them anywhere across the board if I want to go side to side or back. Uh, how it enhances the D action, I can get two cards of the same color on my hand. So again, last time you had to get, it had to be two different rings, so red and green. But if I have my rings adjusted, and just, I do have them adjusted as such, I could, if I wanted to, have gotten two red ring, uh, two red cards that turn, if I wanted to. What E does, uh, if you move from one to seven, if you move three to seven, you can take back one of those cards that you spent, and so you keep it back with you. And what the F action does is to say, you can grab two of any color card and just discard a card from your hand. All right, so it just enhances each one of these actions. I should say, if a student doesn't or can't do any one of these actions, they can always do the actions in the hallway, which is get rid of one card to move someone one space straight up, or get a card that matches a ring that is on their hand. 
Now, the goal, of course, in this one is to reach the top of these steps here and, and become king there. If you're, oh, well, I don't know, big master tutor or whatnot. And this example here, reaching the top will give you various victory points. So in this game, it gives you various victory points. But when someone else comes out and they knock you down, they get to take. When you hit one of the top spots here, I get to take another ring of any color. And this is the time I can rearrange my ring. So maybe I want to have that A action now. So I put these up this way. But when someone bumps me off, they can steal one of my rings. And when they steal one of my rings, oh no, this doesn't give me anything I wanted. Don't, that's okay. I, you're allowed, when someone steals a ring, you're allowed to rearrange your rings so that maybe you'll be getting one of the bonuses put there on the board. So you're collecting rings. Again, if you don't have that color ring on your finger, you can't get all five on there. You can't have more than one ring on a finger. But uh, uh, if the ring isn't available, then you just can't get it and you're moving around, scoring different ways. Now, at the end of this game, it says, hey, of those faction tokens, how many do you have similar? It's kind of like set collection. Again, this could be different in each game, but after every round, you're moving this picture frame up until you get the very, very end. And at the very end, you add up whoever has how many leftover cards, circle tokens, uh, whatever they are, and whoever has the first, second, third most, depending on the number of player games, gets X amount of victory points. Uh, and then that is the game. Final thoughts, one other thing about the game. I've been looking at this game for years, 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 years. Um, I remember when, right before the pandemic, when we were going to BGG Con, this was on my list of things to play. I'd seen it, I said, oh, that looks interesting. I saw it for sale everywhere, people, you know, selling it cheap. I said, maybe this looks like a game for me though. Um, never got to play it. Finally got in a trade and I love it. I, I didn't know it had the it had the nice when I saw the figures I was like, oh, I thought this was Meeples. And then I saw that I had someone's maybe Kickstarter edition or whatever, and that was really nice. It was still super cheap. Um, but the Tudors is a really fun game. It takes a while to get used to the table actions when you're putting out new cards. Because I, I like playing with the base amount, but I understand why you have to put out different cards, because after a while. It's the same strategy, right? It's the same goal to win. So I understand why you don't play with the same cards. And we have switched it up a few times. Uh, but getting those table actions for new uh, people playing to the game was a little confusing. And then remembering the rings. Remembering the rings. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, there's really no good video about this. And I kind of rambled on at the end there. I'm sorry because I was making sure uh, my kids weren't trying to come in at the end there. Uh, but, which always throws me off. Anyway, this game is super fun. It looks really pretty on the board. Yes, the hands don't always stand up for some reason we found. Uh, and we found, or I found, I kept knocking mine down. A few people knocked theirs down, but I was constantly knocking mine down. I had to push mine far away from me. Um, and, you know, there's, well, I guess there is a reason for a player shield. I was going to say there wasn't, but there is. I like the rings. I like the look of this. I like the different strategies and the games you can play. So, yes, this met my expectations. This is worthy to be in my collection. So I do enjoy it. All right, gamers, that's it for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on!